Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Chomont, and I have a rant for you today. Sorry about that. I thought I'd open, you know, close off my de facto studio in my sports room. As you see, I have all my TVs and all that stuff. Folks, I have a, a funny story for you before we jump in. I got 12 TVs in my house. Yes, I'm that guy. You know where I don't have a television? I don't have a television in my bathroom. What the hell am I doing? I need a TV in my bathroom, don't you think? If you think I need a TV in my bathroom, I want you to leave a comment and tell me I need a TV in my bathroom. Because I have a TV on both of my balconies. I have three TVs in here, one in the next room, two downstairs, one, two, three upstairs. How many is that? So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 11, and I have one in my garage where my gym is at, so I have 12 TVs, as I said, but I do not have one in the bathroom. That's crazy, don't you think? Yeah, I think so, too. Anyhow, this is a fun little rant for me because I got to talk about this game between the Phoenix Mercury and Chicago Sky that took place on Sunday, which I didn't get to yesterday. I wanted to talk about it Sunday night, but I I was tired. <laughs> Man, I had a long day, and I did some other uh, other stuff. and. Last night I went live, and I thank you all because we had a great live session uh, for Rudy's Rants, and, and that was dope. I really, It really was dope. So thank you for supporting, and thank you for jumping on. Let me fix this. Let me fix this real quick because this light is messing with me a little bit too much. It's a little bit too bright on my face. But, yeah, so <clears throat> anyhow. We did a rant. We did a rant live last night. Had a, I mean, at one point, I had 228 people in the room. That was awesome. So thank you so much for your comments and your support of this channel as we get closer and closer to 3,000 subscribers. Angel Reese dropped 19 points and had 20 rebounds in an 86 to 68 loss to the Phoenix Mercury on Sunday, right? And all you heard when she had this game was how amazing she was. And in theory, she played a good game. In theory. But in reality, this game was over in the first quarter. This game was over in the first quarter. The game at the end of the first quarter was 32 to 19. The game was done. I mean, if you look at the numbers of it, they were down nine, five minutes in. They were down double digits, six minutes in. And <clears throat> Chicago is proving to be a team that is void of shooting ability. They traded their best shooter, Marina Mabry, who clearly they are missing big time now. I don't exactly know what the point of Chicago's season is at this, at this juncture because they could find themselves losing their way out of the playoffs. And I don't know if that was intentional, if they're tanking, or if Marina maybe just wanted out so badly that she was like, fuck this, I need to get the hell out of here. This toxic-ass franchise, clearly toxic because, you know, you see what's going on. I mean, you have a coach who's, I mean, in, I mean, I thought Teresa Witherspoon would be a good coach, but you have a coach who plays, clearly plays favorites, clearly is playing to a coaching to a narrative the puffery of the statistics early on this you know earlier this year with the streak of Angel Reese and she was playing into that crap and, and it was clear as day now Mabry did too so that was why I thought it was weird that then she wanted out like within a couple of days after that because she was the one that was pointing in to get the ball to Angel Reese in that game against the Atlanta Dream when Kennedy Carter was dribbling the ball out all that said <clears throat> this team can't shoot. They went over 14 from three. They cannot shoot. Now, what they do have is they have bigs. They have Camila Cardoso. They have Angel Reese. They have Isabel, Izzy Harrison. And the problem that exists within this within this in this team, and Nick did Nick did a point guard perspective on it, is that they continue to try to run their offense through a, a player who can't play. They continue to try to run their offense through Angel Reese, who has no offensive skills. Now, in this game, she did finish 8 of 16. She had 19 points, 
She had 20 rebounds. But do you dig? You should dig deeper into these numbers because these numbers are, in the most basic sense of the word, fluff. They're puffery. They're nothing. I have a lot of real bad lighting here today. I don't know what's going on. But they're all puff. It's a puff job. These numbers are fluff. And when she broke, and when she had the, when she was getting closer to the 2020 in the game, that's all the commentators could talk about, despite the fact that Phoenix was blowing them out of the building. Put this into perspective. Camila Cardoso <clears throat> went six of seven for 12 points. She had four rebounds, two assists. She finished with five fouls. Plus minus of minus seven. So when she was in the game, it was a minus seven. She played 16 minutes. Let me repeat. 16 minutes. How the hell is she only playing 16 minutes? Someone has to clue me in on this. Why is Camila Cardoso only playing 16 minutes? I know she had some foul issues. But that's not why she only played 16 minutes. Because I watched that game and I reviewed it again. She got sat for unnecessary lengths of time lengths of time in this game. Reese goes eight for 16. She has 19 points. They were down 19 going into the fourth quarter. It was 69. It was 69-50. 69-50, Phoenix. Going into the fourth quarter, Angel Reese had 10 points. She had nine of her 19 in the fourth in a game that was a blowout. So when we talk about puffery and fluff and padding, this is padding. This is the most basic form of padding. Look, I don't expect you to stop playing, but Camila Cardoso wasn't in the game. It makes you wonder what they're really doing. Are they just doing this to try to puff up these numbers? I don't know what they're doing anymore because Camila Cardoso left the game with about four minutes to go in the third period after she picked up her fourth foul. Now, I know in theory that is probably what you should do, but this was a seven-point game with five minutes to go in the third quarter. This game was down to 57, 56-49 with 525 uh, after Kennedy Carter hit, hit a shot. I'm sorry. It was a 50, 54, I'm sorry, 50, 56, 49, 525, Kennedy Carter makes a layup. And it's like that until there's 435 to go in the third quarter. So with 436 to go in the third quarter, this was a seven-point game. Phoenix got blown out the rest of the way. So from that moment, from that mark at 435, they got outscored 30 to 19. And Cardoso picks up her fourth foul with about four minutes to go. She gets pulled. It's a 10-point game at the time. She comes back in the game with eight and eight minutes to go and picks up her fifth foul with 6-16 and is immediately pulled from the game and does not play again. So Camilla Cardoso, your number one pick, your the third pick in the draft, played one minute and 44 seconds of the final 14 minutes of this game. <clears throat> make that make sense. Make that make sense. She played one minute and 44 seconds of the last 14 minutes of this game, and all you saw was Lee do this. In fact, if you want to be real about it, from the time she sat to the end of the third quarter, they could have scored 9 nothing. It was 9 nothing to finish the quarter after she sat. I'm looking at it right now. I mean, she sat. So you have a 10-point game when she leaves. They're down 19 at the end of the quarter. And when she comes back with eight minutes to go, they're down 17. And when she leaves with 6.16 to go, they're down 15, and you pulled her out. 
Do you understand that you're playing the Phoenix Mercury, who have the tallest player in the league, in Brittany Griner, who still is skilled, and for Cardoso is a good matchup because she can be physical with her. She's the only person that can really bang her. When when Angel Reese is guarding Griner or when Izzy Harrison is guarding Griner, she, I mean, Griner's having her, her way with them. Cardoso's the only one that Griner cannot have her way with. Yet, yet she's sitting on the bench. I don't care if she picked up her fifth foul. Why the hell would you take her out of the game in a 15-point game with 6-16 to go? Are you hoping and praying for a 10-0 run with her on the bench? Is that what you're hoping for, Weatherspoon? Coach? Because that makes no kind of sense. Remember who your number three pick was. This offense should be running pick and roll through Kennedy Carter and Camilla Cardoso every single game. Angel Reese should be in a dunker position, except she can't dunk naturally, but she should be in a cleanup position. Clean up the boards, get putbacks. She shoots at a four, less, she's shooting at less than a 40% clip right now for the season. What is Angel Reese shooting exactly right now? I want to give you exacts. I like doing it that way. She's shooting 39.8% from the field. She's a 6'3 power forward who plays next to the rim and is not making layups. These are facts. This is reality. And instead of having Cardoso, who shot nearly 60% from the field last year at South Carolina and is shooting 49% in the WNBA this year, you're not giving her the ball. When she was in the game, she was 6 of 7 for 12 points. She's nearly impossible to stop around the basket. These are facts. Nearly impossible to stop. She's too big. The only way you can stop her or slow her is to keep her away from the rim. But when she gets her ass in the paint and catches the ball around the rim, it's just a matter if she makes it or misses it because you can't stop it. And that is the, the nonstop thing that aggravates me when I'm watching the Chicago Sky play is they're not playing to what their strengths are. Obviously, they cannot shoot. They have no shooters. The girls they brought, the women they brought in can't shoot. Kennedy Carter can't shoot. But Kennedy Carter can run pick and roll with, with Cardoso. Absolutely she can. And they're not running that. <clears throat> they're dumping it into the post to a player who has no skills on offense. Let alone and in the and, and has no skills in the post. We've seen enough of these videos of her just missing air mailing layups. We've seen enough of these videos. They exist, they're there for a reason. But again, she had 10 points going into the fourth quarter and finished with 19 in a game that was a whooping. So all, none, none of those numbers mean shit. And that's what we talk about when we talk about padding and puffing and fluffing. That's all fluffery. If this was a two, three point, four point game, that's a different situation. You're playing a win. You, you 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 have a chance to win. You obviously it's totally totally different. But when you're down 19 and you're getting your numbers in a game that's largely decided already, what does it mean? At the very least, thankfully Teresa Weatherspoon did not play. She pulled Angel Reese out with 2:39 to go, and didn't allow the 20th point to make it a 20-20, a, a which I'm sure ESPN and her their band of of, of Ladies would have been thrilled to talk about how she had a 2020 and celebrated that accomplishment in an 18 point blowout loss. This is what happened. This is what it is. And instead of the reality of understand that this 20, 19, 20 game with a minus 20 when you're on the floor. So in fact, they were worse with her on the floor than they were when she wasn't on the floor. That should tell you something. She played 35 minutes in this game. She's the only player on the team that played 30 minutes in this game. Carter played 28. Lindsey Allen played 22. Harrison played 25. 
Cardoso playing 16 minutes is fucking ridiculous. I do not care about the foul trouble, especially in the last quarter. I wouldn't have pulled her in the third when you're in a 10-point game because you know the only chance you have is playing big because your shooters, shooters can't shoot. <clears throat> they cannot shoot the ball. So you have a situation where you have your best big sitting while your cleanup Dennis Rodman person, Angel Reese, is getting the ball dumped into her down 18, down 19, down 20, down 17, puffing up her numbers. And then at the end of the day, you're saying, she had a 19 and 20 game. She had 10 offensive rebounds. We're going that direction again. Back to this. 10 offensive rebounds. You almost wonder that they hold her. Look, if you look at the numbers, she played 19 more minutes. So she has 20 boards and Cardoso's got four. She's got 10 offensive boards. Cardoso's got one. The way this team is being coached is embarrassing. And the way the celebrations of these numbers is an embarrassment. Because they did celebrate this shit during the game. The commentators were like, woohoo, what a game by injuries. What are you talking about? If she did that when a, with a win, that's a big game. When you're a minus 20 on the floor and your team lost by 18, that means you were worse than everybody else on your team, theoretically. People will say, oh, plus minus doesn't matter. Plus minus matters and it doesn't. There's, there's, a, there's differing opinions on plus minus in situations. Rudy Gobert for the Minnesota Timberwolves had the best plus minus of the starting five versus Denver, yet everyone said he played like shit. But when he's on the floor, they were better defensively. Angel Reese, if she's scoring, they're likely losing. That's a fact. When she's scoring, they're losing. If you really want to look at all the numbers and the games in which she scored at any level, we can take a look at it real fast right here. <clears throat> 20, 19 points, loss. 17 points, loss. 27 points, win. 18 points, loss. 25 points, win. 20 points, loss. They're two and four. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're two and four in games in which she scores 17 points or more. What does that tell you? That tells you that when she scores, they lose. Tells you that their game plan is fucking trash because she can't be the one scoring for you if, if you expect to win with this team, if you want to win games. I think they've, they've tanked the season. I don't know why they tanked it because I don't think they have a chance and should have getting Paige Beckers. But – they're, they seem to be tanking this season, and I don't think it's going to get any better. And we're going to keep celebrating this, these, tra these numbers on a losing team, on a bad losing team, because they're just getting worse. I don't see this team getting better. I see them fading. Um, it's just we're listening to the puffery, and this is puffery. This is stat padding. This is stat padding at its finest. And if you think I'm crazy, tell me I'm crazy. But when you had nine of your 19 in the fourth quarter in a double in a 19 point game for largely the entire fourth quarter, while your other big is sitting for whatever illogical reason, you tell me what it is. Because I think it's another form of stat padding, except for at least Teresa Witherspoon didn't allow it to become a 2020. And you have a celebration over a 2020 game in a 20 point loss. You tell me. That's all I got. Let me let me let me hear your thoughts, your comments, your opinions on this. Drop a like, comment, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Come on now.